Never in a million years would I have thought to make a video on bone shards if it wasn't for Vizzy Dizzy here. They asked if they were renewable, and I said they were. However, up until recently actually, we would either have to go kind of out of our way to get a bunch of them, or, well, die. Bone shards are not only quite easy to get nowadays, they could actually serve us quite well in the long run. So let's discuss. And we will first list all the ways of obtaining them. Like with hammering the corpses of our fallen comrades. Skeletons drop two bone shards every time. So take advantage of how bad your friends or heck, even yourself are playing if possible. If you have friends, that is. But do note that dead survivors will be dotted all around the map, even in the caves too. So, there you go. If you don't have friends, however, there are other bones to pick. Or, you know, smash, I guess. Mostly found in the desert, the dragonfly desert, mind you. The bones will drop but a single bone shard. However, the skull variant does have a chance to ground a hound to two. You can find these guys in the caves and if you didn't know bones that usually indicate danger and up above that would be hound mounds and down below that would be dangling depth dwellers but bones are not renewable so be very thoughtful there while you're poking around the deserts though you could fight your way to said hound mound areas to destroy them no hammer needed this time around and the harvesting process will be a little more on the dangerous side However, each hound mound means a hound teeth, potentially a number of gems, and of course, two bone shards. What is far more safe yet far more tedious? Rummaging through tumbleweeds. However, not only do you have the measly 1% chance to find a shard, that is actually but a 1% chance to find an item among that 1% tier. In lamest terms, you may get that 1% roll you're looking for, yet you may not even get a shard, so tough luck. And yet another horrible luck-based way to go about bone shard gathering is through friendly catcoons. So don't even frickin' bother, really. Killing some migrating, antler having no idea has a chance of dropping one to two bone shards if you're feeling monstrous. And as an extension of that, starting the claws fight with an antler will always result in at least a single shard at the loot stash. Harvesting sea bones on the Lunar Isles will provide two bone shards every single time, with a 50% chance of obtaining a third. Renewability is an issue, and of course, it's kind of a pain to get to the island, but man, these things are pretty good at giving us what we need. But finally, let us talk the creme de la creme. Although, to my surprise, Clay has gone and made things a little interesting. Spoiled fish and spoiled fish more Morsel work in two totally different fashions, especially in comparison to shipwrecked. Spoiled fish, though, will come from spoiled fish meat, which will come from large fish only. That includes mudfish, deep bass, dandelionfish, and black catfish. But oh yeah, if you despise the seafaring crap like me, Eel could be a very, very good alternative because it is way easier to get lots of. On the other hand, spoiled fish morsel will come through, well, spoiled fish morsels. That will come from runty guppies, needle nose squirts, bitty baity fish, and smolt fries. But again, just screw any of the ocean fishing if you want, and just use freshwater fish instead. Now, Spoiled fish will drop rot and or a bone shard both at a 50% chance, while spoiled fish morsel will see rot drop 75% of the time, with bone shards dropping 25% of the time. Not great, and definitely nowhere near shipwreck levels of production when it comes to spoiled fish, but they might still be our best bet when it comes to renewability. And I think you can see why here. They also stack up to 40, while bone shards only reach 20. 
So it's efficiency galore to boot. The heck are we even using these for, Beard? Good question, friend, and most notably would be the coveted umbrella. Four bone shards, 15 twigs, and Clopsy's eye go into a clothing item that provides 100% wetness resistance, protects against lightning strikes on your noggin, even grants 240 points of overheating protection, and simply looks fashionable. Good stuff. We should already know just how bloody important this thing is. Let's say, though, clops elude you for a bit, or if your favorite color is yellow, what then? Well, we could always invest a single bone shard along with some other crap into a rain hat, potentially. The rain hat only provides 70% resistance to wetness, however, it will give you protection from lightning strikes, even volt goat charges. So combine it with an umbrella, and you'll be good to go. But what's a rain hat without a rain coat? With a crafting recipe that could be a little on the expensive side for some players out there, we should hope that the coat would do us well, right? Right. And at 100% wetness resistance, it is one of two clothing items to provide such protection. You do lose inventory space, mind you. However, lightning won't bother you, and you even get a small 60 points of winter insulation. So, pick your poison. But the umbrella is obviously the poison of choice. Ah, the saddle horn. Such an inconsequential and specific use item that I wouldn't even blame you for not even knowing it existed. It is used to pry saddles off beef flow to preserve their durability. That is it. Moving on to some daily poop talk, and the bucket of poop would like a word. If there was any other reason beyond spring clothing to have bone shards on hand, it would be crafting these things. Poop buckets have 10 uses total, and of course can be used to efficiently fertilize whatever you choose without wasting more manure than what's needed. However, these stinky things also go into crafting both the Mushlight and glow cap when decorating your bases. So lovely stuff. Last, but certainly not least, Wormwood's Bramble Husk Armor. These things are pretty darn good. Not only will they protect against spiky tasks like picking cactus or even spiky bushes, they deal area of effect damage to attackers and against small, horde-like mobs like bees, these are invaluable. So, so good. But there you have everyone. A simple guide on such a simple resource within Don't Starve Together. However, I think a lot of folk don't give bone shards the credit they deserve. Or at the very least, really take them for granted. They're almost essential to our survival. So, bone shards for the win, I say. Thanks for watching, folks. Well wishes to all. Go get boned, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.